Hello diamond friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kalikalu and I also go by the name of Kali and I'm very happy that you found your way to today's video which will be part two of our whip, well not whip, I always say whip, but it's our sip and our chat. And today we have a new guest. So last time we did meet Oswald Jane Art, one of our very lovely and very talented artists. And this time we are going to meet someone else, like also one of our very amazing artists that we have. And it's Flasta Bunny Scribbles. And she's also known as Emily Grobler. So Emily, she's actually an artist that lives in South Africa. And when I first discovered her artwork, I was really drawn to her creativity, her like she does more traditional artwork. And she did have a lot of like drawings that I was really into because I loved how she was drawing it with the pencils, the colors she used. And I feel that from all of our artists that we have, if you compare like your original artwork to her more recent artwork, there was a real big change. And I hope these are things that we can address today in our art chat. And um, so I'm really happy to present her to you and we are going to start immediately as soon as possible so she will join us and like if you watched our very first episode of our sip and art chat you can see that i'm going to progress with different like uh, methods we are going to talk to first of all like about her she's going to present herself talk a little bit more about her art we are going into the progress of how does she create art what is art for her how did she get started afterwards we also have like a little bit of a project that we are doing and at the end of it all, well, there will be a little game where I'll be asking her questions. She's going to answer. And with that, um, we are going to finish the interview. So what is really important to me is that you get to know a little bit more of one of our artists. So she's also an artist that does have her paintings in our shop, Jolly Jam shop. So the link is down below so you can have a little look at it. And we're also going to do like a week an Emily Grobler week, where you can get all of her artwork a little bit less expensive. Um, and yeah, so I really hope you enjoy discovering our newest artist and I really hope you can help, like this helps you to understand a little bit more of her vision of art and also to discover like what she loves to do and how she's working. So let's get started. So before we start this off, I just wanted to show you a little bit more of Emily Grobler's of Lasta Bunny Scribbles artwork. So these were her old paintings, the ones that I did fall in love with when I first discovered her artwork. Um, you can see that the techniques were quite different from what she is currently drawing. They were already a lot of diversified, like this is the painting I'm currently working on. But this is her newer art style and we are going to get into this as well like how she changed her style and what made her actually do these changes. So stay tuned if you want to know more. Hey, hey, <laughs> perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Are you ready, Emily? I, yeah. I think I am, yes. <laughs> okay, great. So um, let's kick it off with a very funny and very interesting question. So did you bring something to drink today? I did. I have. I normally drink uh, tea, but it's so hot today, oh. so I've got apple juice. <laughs> oh, is it hot? You are <laughs> living in um, South Africa, right? It is boiling. Yes. So if you hear something, that's my fan running oh. in the background. <laughs> oh, I can't hear it, but I imagine. So how hot is it, it is. actually? Um, it's. Uh, this past week we've had up to 40 degrees Celsius, so um, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but... because we also... Oh, you don't? Yeah, yeah. so 40, uh, I think today is like uh, 30, 34 or something, but oh. it's just humid. Yeah, oh, that's crazy, <laughs> because we have here like it's 10 degrees, and I feel like it's oh. the hottest we had like in the last weeks, and I'm very happy, and I can't even imagine like 40 degrees at your place. <laughs> oh, that's too much, it's too much. <laughs> yeah, so apple oh, juice or is a great choice. I brought, I don't know if you know that, yes. but it's some elderflower drink, so it's from Ikea, I went to Ikea, and it's also pretty refreshing, Ooh. so... Oh, lovely. Yeah. That sounds refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> so um, usually yeah. you drink tea while you are 
working on yes. your projects? Um, I'm actually, I actually love coffee, but um, I heard you and Julia were talking about how it gives you the jitters. Yeah. And it's the same for me. <laughs> so I have some coffee and then I have some lavender tea to calm down <laughs> from the extreme. coffee. <laughs> yeah, lovely. to try and balance it out. Yeah. That's Otherwise fun. I get just crazy. I, I, uh, yeah. It's have a mental breakdown. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. But um, <laughs> I was I was wondering um, before we really start this interview, could you maybe just I did already the presentation, but could you let us a bit know about yourself? Like, who are you? Where you're from? Like, what inspires you? How did you get to it? Right. Um, yeah. So I'm Emily Grobler. It's an Afrikaans surname. Um, and uh, I live in South Africa and I've been um, creating art for about 10 years now, um, kind of professionally. Mm -hmm. um, my husband always encouraged me to, to keep it up and, and so now it's become my career, which is um, something quite special for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. I yeah. always love like when you have people who are really supporting you in what you do. And this helps you yes. sometimes if it's difficult, because at the beginning it might be difficult and then afterwards it's moving along and then you're so happy that they helped you out throughout your journey and they were That's there for true. you. Yes, yes, yeah, especially when, when you have those doubts and um, there's someone else with that outside perspective to yeah. keep you going. Yeah. So I was wondering, you mm -hmm. said that Grobler is an African surname? Yes, so it's very similar to Dutch. Okay. Um, and yeah. you roll it's it's like a guttural sound a ch and a, a, r, a ch roller, you know <laughs> i try <laughs> it's very yeah. a very rough sort of yeah in the throat <laughs> okay i did not know for yeah. me it was like more it did sound like um german a little bit but if you say no it's quite it's similar yes yeah yeah okay. similar sounds yeah mm -hmm. And you um, have always, but, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, yeah. And I was just going to say Afrikaans is very similar to Dutch. Oh, um, because of yeah, colonization? Very closely. Oh. Yes, yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Have you <laughs> always lived there, like from, as a child as well? And then, or did you move to South Africa? Yes. Um, yes. Um, so we live in a, a very small little town, uh, which is where I grew up. But my parents came from Cape Town. Okay. Um, but I've I've always been in South Africa. I've never left the country. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's so yes. interesting. Like I have yeah. never visited Africa, like the continent apart like from the Morocco, just like one one day and it was really beautiful, yeah. but it's so different like from Europe or from the United oh, States. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, it's it's a very unique little country. <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> and yeah. I was wondering, like in your drawings, is this something that inspires you as well? Like um let me think about that. Uh, you mean the uh, culture of mm -hmm. our country? Yeah. Um I I think I'm actually what would I say? Um, a lot of the uh, nature and the wildlife over here is is very well represented by South African artists. Like they do the lions and the cheetahs and the the fame boss, you know, the mountain um, succulents and so on. Mm -hmm. And so I almost feel like I would like to represent something else. <laughs> um, so I draw plants that I find uh, more lush. Mm -hmm. Like I really love a lush landscape which is okay. not very much South Africa. <laughs> yeah, but maybe yeah. subconsciously, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I'm sure it does. I'm sure it must be coming through. Um, I haven't really thought of it in that in It that was way. not in the questions. It was just a question that popped up in my mind. So I was like, yeah, ask Emily. But maybe at the end of the interview, <laughs> I don't know, like uh, maybe you will think Something about it. Something will come to me. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure it must be um, in the... Um, I tend to draw things that I'm, I don't often have 
in my life like it's almost like an imaginary fantasy world you know <laughs> so I think uh, sometimes that's what artists do they they draw things that they don't actually see a lot or mm -hmm. it's not in their life put it that way that's fine <laughs> okay. yeah no, it's interesting like it's always something that I find interesting to ask like um, is there something like that influences you and I want to talk about this yeah. a little bit more if you want to um, but just before that I wanted to ask you about the challenge oh, I've got my I've got my my book and my <laughs> pencils and everything so yeah. I'm actually looking forward to I've never drawn a French bulldog so oh. that's going to be an interesting challenge <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know if you watched like the video I did with um, Julia, but she also drew like the same from the same picture. So I'm very curious to see same how picture, yours okay. yeah, will turn out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and um, also like this is my drawing I did last time with um, Julia. But could you give me like... Oh, uh, that was so... Yeah, I'm not an artist, so it was really, yeah. Something. I was very impressed that you that you did so much detail in it, during the interview. <laughs> it's it's quite a challenge to talk and draw at the same time. Yeah, I try to listen as it's well. Really but yeah, yeah. Doing two times, it's yeah, two things at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so I was asking you, um, okay. what would you like to for me to draw? Like just a theme or something in particular? Oh, um, hmm. I forgot that you weren't going to be drawing the dog. Yeah, so no. So let me think. <laughs> <laughs> something um, um, that's typical you, for example, or something. Like for her, I did draw a character, but with the flower theme. Okay. Something that's... I, I don't want to make it too difficult, but um, how do you feel about a fox? A fox. Okay, sure. I can yes. try that. Yeah. Can you try that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so... Um, why we continue like um talking a little bit so even if you don't finish that's not yeah. a problem it's just like for fun um could you tell me a little bit more about what inspired you like what did get you into art actually um okay so yeah that takes me back to what i was saying about my husband who encouraged me always um to draw um, we knew each other since little kids and um, he would, every time I drew something, he would just be so excited about it. <laughs> and I would always be like, um, I don't, you know, I didn't think it was that great, but um, he would always be like, draw something else, draw something else. <laughs> so um, over the years, he would always be asking me to draw things for him. Mm -hmm. And um, um, at some point, I, it never became a reality to me until after I went to study. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually went to study cookery, okay. <laughs> which is something completely different. Yeah. Uh, and um, sometimes you need to do something to see if it's something you want to do or not. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to try it out. Yeah. And um, I enjoyed the cooking, but it was very stressful for me. Mm -hmm. So I found myself coming back to the the drawing which you know, is, is a much more relaxing um career yeah and i also think it helps yeah. you like about your emotions or stuff you're going through like all of these art yeah. like uh, writing drawing diamond painting all that does help you also i think it's more calming more soothing than maybe cooking cooking can yes. be pretty stressful i think like especially it's hectic. <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's crazy when you when you're cooking for um you know more than uh, 10 people at a time it's <laughs> it can really push you over the edge <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so you were um try you wanted at the beginning to be like more of a cook or like where yes. is idea um, it it actually came from when my parents started a vegetable garden and um they kind of started a small farm and I just loved that you could grow your own stuff and take it into your kitchen and take some eggs from your chickens and take your own like animals or everything. Um, I found that just very beautiful and inspiring. Um, 
but then the culinary world is actually a lot different to that mm -hmm. so it was a bit of a, a shock to yeah. you to go into this crazy other world that's not as peaceful as the yeah. the farm life <laughs> like more stressful so, i imagine yeah yes so um I, i have a vegetable garden now and i want to get some chickens and all that and i love that's the kind of thing i love i love the the beauty of the plants like for me that visually as well they're just so beautiful mm -hmm. the vegetables and the flowers and the the way they climb up things is just beautiful <laughs> yes <laughs> so you yeah. also have chickens that is quite <laughs> something <laughs> like i mean well i i don't i want to get chickens that's I the next, next next on the list yeah. <laughs> that's great <laughs> really i really love that idea like to be close to nature as well and i think that's something yes. that um if you live like in bigger cities it's something that's getting lost and it's a little bit sad i think so and that's also like mm -hmm. a theme that comes up pretty often like in your drawings all of that nature wise and so on yes yeah i was wondering yeah. um, do you have like main sources that inspire you like uh, topics or themes like or even artists that you look up to um yes so uh, as we mentioned nature and mm -hmm. um, wild animals especially for me are so beautiful um so i have um especially yeah i've got like a list of wild animals that i still want to learn how to draw properly but <laughs> for me there's something about the look in their eyes and mm -hmm. just their how they just know know their way you know they can just make their own lives out there in the mountains <laughs> it's just so mystical to me um and then um i really enjoy watching um, art vloggers on YouTube. Um, Jess Carp and Furry Little Peach and uh, Little Tiny Egg. Um, what's it? Pear Fleur. <laughs> Not sure how you say it. But yeah, they all present their art and they talk you through their processes, which is um, very interesting to me like I want to get inside their heads and like how do you think about your art you know <laughs> it's really interesting to see those things like how people perceive yes. art mm -hmm. so did you pick up yeah. um, some things from them as well that you can apply now in your art because it's something that I said in my introduction video as well I feel like um the very first paintings yeah. I have seen from you like um the garden sceneries and I think they were very very beautiful that's what also got me into your artwork yeah. i discovered and i think that from the start if you see your more recent creations there is a huge evolution about what happened in your art oh. i feel like because you changed completely wonderful um <laughs> is there something like that yeah you... that yeah that is that can be like a good thing and a bad thing because um i think my problem often is i want to change too quickly I want to go to um, explore different styles too quickly before I've mastered one. <laughs> so that could be one thing that I struggle with. But at the same time, I, I know what you're talking about because I have decided to kind of um, apply myself to one narrower field mm -hmm. of art, which is the, the gouache painting to make it about a wild animal and a person on an adventure yeah and i'm just doing variations of that and um that that has actually made me improve a lot faster <laughs> because i've i've decided to be you know if you keep the doors wide open you're just trying all these things and you mm -hmm. don't actually master something yeah it's more so, like you you yeah. see different things but it's never something that you get perfection in in some kind exactly. of exactly yeah yeah And also, I think you change the colors you use, no, for your more recent. Yeah, colors. it's more like like uh, fewer colors, but like with huge contrast, right? Or am I a little bit? Mistaken? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's something um, I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're noticing. <laughs> so um, that was for a particular art challenge oh. I was doing in october mm -hmm. it, it was called um, peach tober okay and it was hosted by furry little peach um, she hosts 
a, a drawing challenge. It's a, a drawing prompt, one prompt every day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I decided to be more disciplined and, and just use a set amount of colors and a set theme. <laughs> and that's how I came up with those um, artworks like that. They are really um, beautiful though. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering, is there like a habit that you have, like a quirky habit that you have when you draw, like something that you must do before you can start or? Oh, uh, right. Um, I couldn't really think of anything uh, quirky. Um, I usually spend a lot of time just setting up my workspace and um, I generally have to have something to drink just to feel like I'm in the zone. Mm -hmm. um but i don't i don't really know like i know what really helps me is uh first thing in the morning i will go out into my vegetable garden and i'll just spend like an hour watering and weeding and it's just like immersing myself in nature you know and i find that um, puts me in a good frame of mind for creating art and then you're inspired <laughs> and you kind of go yeah yeah exactly yeah because your mind frame does make a difference sure uh, when you right. yeah. yeah and um so. i was wondering like for yourself what is your biggest evolution that you have seen or noticed in your art ever since you started so i think it really was what we were talking about and uh, narrowing down my um my style um so sticking with a, a certain theme where i i decided okay i'm only going to draw a wild animal with a person who's like their trainer and um show them on some sort of adventure mm -hmm. and within that there are so many possibilities even if you limit yourself you can create all these possibilities but you're also forcing yourself to um to master certain things <laughs> and and then your art actually uh, progresses so yeah doing that and then also um, choosing my colors and sticking with those colors because even using different colors every day can be a challenge mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you just limit your colors then you're also and you'll see a lot of the big artists they do that as well they have they'll have like these are my colors <laughs> it's just like that's the colors they use <laughs> and it's difficult so, yeah it's difficult to get yeah, everything you... done with like two three or up to six colors i think it's really not that easy if, even if you have like different shades of the yes. same color it does not make it easier because with the shadow and everything so i think yeah i find i had to like really think about what am i going to you can't just put any two colors next to each other. Mm -hmm. So you have to plan. I'm going to put it here, put it there, but then I can't put that one there. <laughs> so you're going to map it out yeah. beforehand. Yeah. Is it difficult <laughs> as well? If you have like, now you're limiting yourself to a few colors, but imagine you had like all the colors you should use, like up to, I don't know how many, like a hundred colors for one design. Wouldn't that be difficult yeah. as well? or less um, in your opinion i i i really enjoy colors like i know some artists you get some artists who find colors super challenging and then others who find it like the, the best part and i'm i'm the one that finds that the, the most fun part of the art is, is to color it mm -hmm. um so i enjoy having a lot of colors but then i always find that the end result can sometimes not be so defined you know it can just end up looking kind of realistic and not stylized well that's that's what I end up with you know like a almost like a photo more like a photo than like a um, okay something that you stylized okay. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense yes yeah I try to picture it like I think that for myself as well like coloring things is really fun because then you have like your yeah. sketch which is already done 
And I think this is for me like the most challenging part if I try to draw something, like to get the picture I have in my head on the paper. <laughs> like, but yeah, yeah, once that's done, maybe it's easier. Like, I don't know, I'm trying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was wondering as well, yeah. like, um, maybe if you could um, tell us like which painting does represent for you that big evolution like we were talking about your more recent art I'm going to try to put also oh, yeah. put a few of your paintings um, in the video so people can see On what you're talking about yeah okay. but um, okay. so you maybe have yeah. one that you are very proud of like um, yeah um, I think I have it here as well it probably won't show up so well oh. I really like this yeah it's beautiful. um i think it's going up on the shop yeah it's going yeah it's one of the ones we yep. yes we're yeah. putting up there and um i love how i, I love the angle mm -hmm. you know it's kind of a dramatic angle yeah um and then this these tulips wrapping around which goes underneath his wing and over so it's kind of everything is um linked together linked yeah knit together in the picture um i was sort of pushing myself you know with perspective <laughs> so it was a challenge but i i really like how it turned out and also the way i use the color palette mm -hmm. it's not too harsh um some of them some of them i feel like the colors came out too bright mm -hmm. and but this one came out just just the right balance yeah so <laughs> I think it's really beautiful as well like how you use the different colors you just showed us and how they are fitting together yeah. because it does look very peaceful um even though like oh, that's that's what I want yeah I think it's <laughs> very peaceful you have another with a dog I think if I remember correctly like a setter oh yes yes um, do you like that one yeah i really like that because like the perspective of the dog and the size of the dog uh, that's, that's the foxy one no or is it that's the foxy, foxy one? One? um there was one with a big <laughs> dog head like i really really liked i don't know um oh yeah is it this one yeah this one is also no. very... is it <laughs> do you like it i don't I know. like it lots it's really beautiful i love this one yes i love i love the uh the big ears yeah. <laughs> It's really beautiful. It's so cute. So, um, how long does it take you to to make one of these drawings in general? Um, it does take a while, um, because um, the thing about drawing is you have to, you actually need to practice every single object that you want to draw. Um, so you can get really good at drawing cats, but you can't draw dogs. You know. So and I'm drawing a new animal each time. <laughs> so I had to fill these pages and pages for each animal. I do all these sketches, um, just looking up different angles and poses of this one animal and sketching and sketching. And then eventually I come up with my final. How you like it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you have so, full of one same animal before you start it off like different yes. colors and different how he's like sitting or what his face is looking like yes and even the person that I want to draw with it um, I'll also just do lots of practice sketches to get what I want <laughs> in the final result and so, how do you yeah, choose always... sorry how do you choose like the person um, that goes with the animal like is it like random or do you take people you see like in daily life and then you add them like are they inspired um, they are i actually go on pinterest a lot <laughs> and i because my pinterest is very nicely curated when i open there it's already got the kind of people i like drawing it's got all the animals i like drawing <laughs> so pinterest knows me and i know pinterest <laughs> so you go yeah. so that's that's easy to do then you find your your that's what I do <laughs> <laughs> I mean every now and then I will see something beautiful in in my daily life mm -hmm. and then I will try to re remember it in my mind and then draw it as soon as I get the chance um I did that recently I will see if I can find it but yeah 
because apparently that, that is the best way to draw like from life <laughs> okay you go outside and draw what you see so i saw this um this bird it's a dove okay i don't know if you can see it right? yeah yeah it's it's sitting in the apple trees and you just um, draw it like you see it like i drove yeah i was driving past so i couldn't take a photo but then i at, when i got home i was like I'm, i just need to capture this because it was so so pretty to me you know the apples and the bird and the leaves so but i imagine that this is even more difficult than when you draw something um from a fixed image that from you have a photo yeah um yes um but in in the art practice they say mm -hmm. it's actually very bad for you to draw from photos because you end up um your drawings end up stiff okay so if you're drawing from real life you're forced to draw faster and then your drawings are more lively okay so that's <laughs> that's Makes the challenge sense. always to get yourself yeah. out there and, and just um capture things on the go yeah because then you get the movement yeah. into it and exactly yeah, yeah. okay mm. that's interesting <laughs> like i did not <laughs> that. like i'm not drawing as much these days because like when i was a kid i really loved drawing and the thing is i could never draw so when i was um in primary school we had once like a class paper and the teacher did yeah. put some words down and then we had to draw the words so that he knew that we didn't know what it meant actually it was some vocabulary test and uh. um, I did draw an animal, but he could not recognize what it was. So um, he did. I received a bad mark for that. And like, oh, shit. yeah. And my parents, like, they really made fun of me back then because of that. And then they oh, gave shit. me like a picture book of it, like how to draw animals. And, yeah. <laughs> so I, I became the joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's still the joke. Oh, I have, I have. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to draw then, and um, my grandpa, he is really good at drawing as well, so um, he told me, oh, that, really? yeah, he helped me out with some drawings for school I had to do later on, <laughs> so it was yeah. getting better, but I understand, and he always said to me also that drawing from live pictures um, make, gives it more movement also um, in the painting. Mm but like it's more difficult it if you're not used to it like capturing something you see um and something you yes. don't see like constantly is more difficult i feel yeah yeah and you've got to go find it you got to stand there yeah. if the wind is blowing or the sun is baking on you or the ants are crawling up your legs <laughs> that's what artists have to do <laughs> yeah and you see them like if you yeah. go see the classes that's what they do as well so um is it yeah yeah um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to know, like, do you have maybe one big resolution for like this year? I know we are already in February, but maybe you had a resolution as an uh, artist. I think um, it's always just an ongoing goal of of being, you know, showing up every day at my desk and drawing, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because that can also be a challenge. Um, I'm a mother of five, so there's always a lot going on. And um, uh, I also homeschool them, so it's like, got to really balance my time with everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would say what I would really love is to uh, become a like a picture book illustrator. Because so far I've been doing um, computer graphics mm -hmm. um, as a career. Okay. So it's kind of related to illustration, but it's not exactly the same. It's a, it's a lot more simplified. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, like children book illustrations and so on. I haven't, I haven't really gotten into that um, industry. So <laughs> I would love to to create these um, soul images for beautiful, beautiful books. books. Yeah, and yeah. I think I would really see your artwork also in that kind of uh, book as well because it's so beautiful mm. for the kids. Like also like what you're currently drawing um, with the animals, big animals and the person. Yeah. And so I think that fits pretty well. Like the theme for kids books as well. Is there maybe exactly. like a story you would actually want to draw something for? Like a yes, book? yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the pictures I'm drawing, I kind of already have a story in my mm -hmm. head uh, of 
of the world and what they're doing and so on. Um, mm -hmm. And when I was a child, I um, I did this one storybook for school and my dad just loved it. He just said to me, you must become a children's book illustrator or a children's book writer or something. Um, and to this day, I still haven't done that. <laughs> so that is something um, on my bucket list. To, what to do, yeah. Yes. <laughs> one day publish something or at least be involved yeah something besides so, yeah yeah children and then you can read them to your own children that would be fun exactly it would be so sweet and they're growing up so uh, i'm running out of time <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe at the end of the year who knows like maybe this year it will happen so maybe, maybe uh, yes um, Julia said to me that like she did some illustration for um, children books like um, while she talked to me there was like a web page oh, yes. and um, I don't know if it's really something that you're interested in maybe you could have a look with her about yes this work. Um, on Fiverr I think she was talking about Fiverr and yeah. Um, yeah I'm also trying to get going on mm -hmm. on that site I found, actually found her account on there as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's super cool to, to connect. Yeah. Sure. With maybe other people on the same yeah. wavelength. Yeah. Sure. No, she's really nice as well. So I think that would be. She's lovely. Oh, great. All right. I'm new to this. No worries. <laughs> so, um, did you move on a little bit? I did move on a little bit with my drawing, but I'm still not finished. So. <laughs> I'm very slow, um, so I've got a little something going. I don't know if you can see him. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's rec <laughs> I can recognize him, so it's good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I'll, I really want to see the end result of it later on. So um, if you want, um, we did talk a little bit more in general about you and your artwork, how you got into it in the first part. Okay. So um, if you want, I would like to link it a little bit more to diamond painting since we did this collaboration together, like where we have a few of your images in our shop. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, so if you um, know that after this interview, we will do a special week um, about your artwork. So we are going to showcase it with the interview on our web page. And um, so I did bring you actually, um, I wanted to show you because I was working on your kids into the forest. Uh, so I did progress a little bit, but I did not finish it yet. But <laughs> can you see it? Oh, there we go. Uh -oh. <laughs> the audio was a bit bad just now, but I'm, I'm, I think we're oh. catching up. Yeah. So I wanted to show you like the progress I made on your picture into the forest um oh beautiful yeah and i want yes. to know like what does it feel like for you to um have this collaboration going like um it's it's very it's it's quite a strange feeling actually to see my art in a way that i never uh thought mm -hmm. was possible i didn't know about diamond painting until i met you so it's it's a, a whole new world that you've introduced me to okay. and um seeing the seeing it being put together like that mm -hmm. it's just it's i think the word is thrilling it's it's just really exciting to see it in this completely different format and to also think that someone is spending this time you know putting it together piece by piece <laughs> it's quite special yeah to reproduce your beautiful painting that you did draw yeah, so um, we have a few of your paintings already in our shop, mainly your artwork, um, your older artworks, like um, the garden scenery and also like um, more of the Ghibli inspired versions. Um, is there mm -hmm. one piece of art or two that you would like to talk a little bit more about? Like, um, why did you draw those paintings or what inspired? We did already talk a little bit about inspiration, but um just something you want um yeah maybe we could talk about the the uh, ghibli inspired um i think oh that was also from an art challenge <laughs> and we were going through a ghibli inspired month 
Mm -hmm. and just taking word by word um, to draw our favorite things from the movies. So I decided to paint them. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, the, the one I did with the one that you're doing now mm -hmm. is it's basically my own creation. Um, it's, it's not found in the movie. Um, she, there isn't a scene where she's yeah. doing that. She, it's just something I thought of, which would be really cute with, you know, with her hugging the little Totoro and kind of squeezing him. <laughs> because yeah. my daughter does that. Oh. We have a little cat and she grabs the cat and she just squeezes him. But, you know, it's just so much love <laughs> for this poor cat. Oh, and the eyes love. just go like, <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so that's kind of what I was capturing there was yeah. that moment of adoration. <laughs> this is really one of uh, my favorite pieces that we actually have currently in our shop from you. Um, oh, for <laughs> yeah, just because I love how you mix this all together, like these beautiful colors of the forest and the wildflowers and the wood and all that comes together. And then this little girl in the middle and then like squeezing to death, like for love and everything. <laughs> so cute. Like, yeah. yeah. Really? Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, that was just my, um, my all my favorite things together kind of you know the flowers and greenery like forests and then the old roots the tree roots going over the rocks it's just yeah. something I absolutely adore yeah yeah <laughs> and I think you captured that very beautifully as well like the nature and the wildness of that so uh, thank you <laughs> I was also wondering um so you know that um, there are many people who actually do diamond painting or art as well um, because they like have struggles like they struggle with health or with mental issues depression anxiety um, yes do you think your art can help or art in general can help um, yeah I I think so um, for me um, it comes down to the meaning of of the art um, what the artist is saying with the art I think there's a lot you can um, maybe comfort that you can get from it um, but I am a I am a Christian so it's it's it is Christian inspired in in a subtle way um, but for me the, the thinking behind it is that our our hope is in a, a new life um, so you see, I do the animals and the people, especially wild animals and people, mm -hmm. because um, because the animals are afraid of us. You know, the wild animals are afraid of us. Yeah. And there is a um, a scripture in the Bible that says that the lion and the lamb will mm -hmm. lie down together, and uh, um, the baby will play with near the uh, cobra's den. So there's going to be this whole other world where everything will be safe. The wild animals will will want to be around us. You know, they, they'll be just fine with us. You know, and we'll, they'll just be this perfect peace and harmony. So that's kind of what I'm putting into my pictures is yeah. is the unity between nature and and humans. Mm -hmm. This harmony and um, yes, calmness you can find. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of an escape, and I think that's a lot of times what art is, is it's a kind of an escape. Yeah, um, for the artist and but, also for those yeah. that see the art. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that's what I try to put in there. <laughs> that's very yeah. beautiful, and I think that can also inspire a lot of people that see your artwork and that see that calmness inside your artwork that's also something that I told you earlier I did not know that you drew, did draw it just for like the harmony with the owl and calmness but it's really yes. something that gets through your drawing and that's really nice to see like yeah it's just like an extra layer of of meaning I think that's um can bring some comfort <laughs> yeah yeah um, do you want um, us to maybe wrap it up like with some few fun questions? Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is there something, um, what would be the strangest request or comment that you have received about your artwork? 
um, I once had a, a guy um, ask me to to paint to do to make a profile picture of him as a super like strong gym guy, but like really strong, like over the top, like Superman. Um, <laughs> but he he in reality he was kind of <laughs> a little bit chubby <laughs> so i had to like try to make it look like him but also like this very strong <laughs> was a real challenge <laughs> was it for but, fun or did he really see himself like this <laughs> no he knew he he wanted to, it was like his new year's resolution kind of thing ah, to, to okay. go to the gym and, and, and <laughs> but uh, i really struggled with that one <laughs> yeah that's fun though like mm. trying something and then having to adapt and you don't really know what to say sometimes um do you often yeah. get like um commissions or work of like requests does this happen often um i sometimes i i used to do things for free um it would often be friends or family um that asked for logos or Mm -hmm. profile pictures um but then after a while i um because i was doing full-time work mm -hmm. i decided to stop to stop doing free work <laughs> because it, it does actually take up a lot of time sure yeah uh, also with yeah, family. So, yeah 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 <laughs> that's nice um did you yeah. actually um ever like spill or do some accident with the work you were working on spill something on um i think what the only time i can remember now is when i one of the artworks i have on my instagram um had a like a, a lump of uh paint on it and i'd also smudged so it like was a lump of paint and i smudged it But I took the photo and I uploaded it to Instagram without seeing it. <laughs> so I only saw it afterwards. And I was like, what? How did I not see this? <laughs> so I think it's still there. Um, just to remind me. <laughs> I have not noticed of it. That. I'm going to go back to your pictures now. To go look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to find it. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't notice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is it one that we have in stock? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember. I think it might be. It's the one with the the garden wall and it's got like these big flowers in front. I think it's called the garden enclosed. Yeah. But I might have edited one. the photo. I don't know. Yeah, I hope I edited it. <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed. It might still be in there. <laughs> it can't be that bad. I did not notice it if it's there. <laughs> I was horrified. I couldn't believe I missed it. <laughs> I'm going to have a look at it later. <laughs> um, then I also wanted to ask you, like, if you had a superpower that would link to art, which would be? Um, I think that would be to um, be able to draw any human expression, like facial expression, uh, with without a reference like just be able to draw the facial expression on the go <laughs> like i have to normally i have to try over and over and over <laughs> so it would be amazing to just be able to do it yeah is Just this something that. that's difficult for you like um drawing facial expressions in general yes yeah it's quite challenging okay because it is also moving i suppose because you have to get capture like life and yeah yeah movement yeah you want to capture what they look like but also the expression like the yeah the person mm -hmm. so it's not just stiff like that like it, we talked about yeah exactly it's like the person's personality as well so it can be quite tricky mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um if we could like send one of your paintings into space to share with the external lives which would it be um sorry the audio is a bit bad oh, Do you no mind worries it like um if we could yeah. send one of your paintings into space oh like, into space yeah, yeah. which um, one i i made this one of myself and my husband just kind of like 
smiling at each other. And I think that would be um, something sweet, you know, <laughs> to show about humanity that people love each other. And um, yeah, I think it would uh, be a good way to represent mm -hmm. something good about something our, good. <laughs> yeah. our kind. Yes. <laughs> that would be beautiful. Something sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. So, um, Emily, if you want, you can finish it off with a very, very short game. Um, I'm going to tell you like yeah. two options and you have like to give me your answer without explanation and oh, yes. very quickly. Um, so the first one is easy because we already talked about it, but tea or coffee? Um, coffee <laughs> even though <laughs> okay uh morning well night... it's bad for me but i'm addicted so <laughs> i'm addicted <laughs> the addiction is real yeah um the second one is morning or night um morning morning uh abstract or realism it's a hard one i think realism mm -hmm. i think most slightly of... more yeah, I think most of your yeah. art also goes more into realism, right? Like, I think so. Yeah, I, I I try very hard to to not be too realistic because then I feel like it's too complicated. Like I would, I try to simplify it a bit, but um, yeah. I also think that <laughs> I try. Even though you're like um more realistic drawings that you do, you can still use fantasy like as a theme to get out of this realism in some way and I think that's also something you're doing um, and that's something I really like in your paintings as well oh that's good to hear <laughs> yeah um then character or landscape uh landscape I think yeah nature <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah. plant or spontaneous uh, planned. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was thinking about all of your sketches you were talking about. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, studio or outdoor? We did already talk about that. I think. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I'm more comfortable in my studio, mm -hmm. but yeah, I would like to get outdoors more and do more on location art. <laughs> yeah. Um, solo or collaboration? I couldn't really decide. Um, probably solo. I mm. do enjoy collaboration as well, though, so it's hard. <laughs> a hard is one. There, like, is there a project that you or an artist that you would love to collaborate with? Like, hmm. um, yeah, definitely. I think a book, a picture book, um, because. I would like to just do the drawing and let someone else do all the mm -hmm. publication stuff. That would be a dream. <laughs> okay. So, like yeah. children books we talked about earlier, then. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yeah, children or any sort of beautiful illustrations. Mm. The next one we did also talk about 10 colors or 80 colors? Um, 10 colors, mm. yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, favorite color? My favorite color would be, it's been a uh, lime green since I was like a little girl. It's still my favorite color. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, your preferred yeah. medium to work with? Um, at the moment, it's uh, gouache paints. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but that's what yeah. I do. Um, all the In paintings. The latest, in yeah. gouache. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. Um, do you want you say at the moment so does that change maybe that? you said at the moment oh, at the moment well i have i love to try out art materials so i mean i've got like all my uh, markers and they're such pretty colors yeah and and then i have my charcoals mm. and i've got watercolors and i've got um watercolor markers and alcohol mm. markers and um, acrylic paints and um, colored pencils, which I love, love my colored pencils. So it's a bit of a problem. 
so maybe <laughs> too many things so maybe <laughs> in the future we will see um some new variations to it then exactly i think i yeah i can't help myself so <laughs> i'm looking Probably. forward to that <laughs> <laughs> um then uh we have new and unexplored theme that you would like to try um I know I say I, I draw a lot of nature, but I actually would like to explore um, cityscapes, mm -hmm. um, you know, scenes with lots of buildings and lots of people. Um, I find that beautiful in its own way. Um, so, yeah, that would be something I would like to explore at some stage. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Your dream location for an exhibition? Um, I don't, I, I don't actually know a lot of, um, museums or anything. So I would probably go with like an online platform like Behance, um, because I would love to be featured on Behance, you know, like the main page. <laughs> I think that'd be a big honor. Um, and then you have all the people who yeah. are watching that. Yeah. That would be amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think the world is really online at the moment. Well, a lot. Um, and I'm, I live very remote, so I don't have access to a lot of um, uh, events and so on. Yeah. Where I am out, yeah. <laughs> that would how yes. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, what is your current yeah. project? If you can tell us. Um, yeah, I. what did I do? I did my uh, YouTube banner. Mm -hmm. Ah, I did see that. It's so beautiful. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank <Dog>. you. <laughs> beautiful. So it's it's on my iPad. I can't actually show it to you now, but it's also on um, Instagram. So it's on Instagram and on my YouTube. Um, I'm starting a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm uh, working on the first video for that. If you can, but, um, if you can yeah. later, um, send me the link then I can place it in the description down below and then people oh, who are watching can go have a look at it. <laughs> yes, that's a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> um, but other than that, I am working on another painting, but it's only a sketch. Mm -hmm. So it's not much to see right now. But I will show it on my YouTube. <laughs> oh, we are going to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, I'm interested. <laughs> Yay. Um, and to finally end this, I would like um, to show off our creations, if you want, if you're ready. Uh, it's not done. I don't yeah, know mine, done, either. But... mine either. Mine oh. <laughs> either. Okay. Um, do you want um, to do this or should I? I don't mind. Should I? No, you go. Go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. I don't know if you can see him there. Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. Oh. <laughs> I'm does... going to add some some more um, contrast. Uh -huh. So then it will uh, stand out a bit better. But that's the basic. Oh, but he's adorable. He does look like Edgar. So thank you. Does he? Yeah. He does. <laughs> it's my first time drawing a, a French bulldog. So you did um, do it very well. I was a bit. Uh... <laughs> Thank no, you. It's great. You did a great job. <laughs> so um actually I did draw something. I did not put any color in though. Um I was not quick enough. And it does look kind of like a fox, but not really. Oh dear, the, the video has stopped, so now I can't see. Oh <laughs> um it's sometimes uh, oh, there we go. There we oh, go. Good. It's it's coming. It does look uh, yeah. It does look like a fox, and that's amazing because I was trying to draw foxes today, and it was not looking like a fox at all. So that's very good. <laughs> uh, I think it does look more like a wolf, though. That's what I I was struggling with that as well. Mine was looking like a wolf, so it's not easy. I think it's the coloring that does make the difference later on. Like once you place the yeah, color, like I don't know. That yeah. looks like a wolf. But the face shape, I, I think. have to work on it. <laughs> like here, you can. 
<laughs> yeah. No, it's great. Yeah. Um, so um, <laughs> just to finish it off, um, two quick questions. Um, do you have like any advice for someone like me who does not know how to draw, but who, who enjoys drawing sometimes? Like for beginners. Uh, yeah, let me think. I would say um, I, basically what we were talking about, about drawing loose, mm -hmm. not not um, spending too much time on one thing. Mm -hmm. So set yourself a time, like five minutes to just draw one thing. Okay. And um, yeah, don't worry about it. Like if it's if it's not great, just move on to the next one. At some point, all those little, um, it's like you're building up this whole uh, memory log mm -hmm. of information in your brain and all those strokes you're making is going to eventually help you to become a better artist so okay yeah so they don't give up okay daily workouts <laughs> and daily trying and regular drawing that does help then yes every even the bad ones it's like mm. you it's it's helping you to build towards what you need what you're going towards but you're going to have to make mistakes along the way to get there. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's with everything like that. Yeah. Like every like little thing that you try to learn, you have to go through the mistakes to get to the point where you're good at it in the end. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Emily, is there something you want to say at the end of the video? Like for those who were watching or like in general? Um. I I think it's very special to be connected to the diamond painting community. Um, it's something I didn't know about before and it's very special to have my art as a project, you know, for other people to enjoy. Um, yeah, it's when you create art, you just think of it as something that someone will look at mm -hmm. and then move on, you know, but with diamond painting, you're actually spending hours and hours like putting in all those little details and like really connecting with the art, which is, mm -hmm. I think is something quite unique. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Emily, for all your kind words and also like for joining me today and doing this interview with me. I was so happy to finally meet you uh, via Zoom. <laughs> but um, yeah. It was really fun because I got a more of an insight into your whole world of an artist and what you like. And I found it really interesting to talk to you. So thank you so much again for doing this with us today, like with me. Thank you too. <laughs> I really uh, appreciate the, the opportunity to connect and, and to be part of your, uh, your story. 